So moving to the next question, the ghost image in a panoramic image with reference to particular anatomic structures has following typical properties. So this one image represents the ghost image. So you can see uh, the, uh, the, the right earrings. These are the right earrings and this one is the left earring. So on, on the panoramic you will see the ghost images they will appear on image of the opposite side of its true anatomic location at a higher level. So the left hearing here would be seen here at a higher level, opposite side at a higher level. Similarly, the right earring, uh, the ghost image would be uh, of the right earring would be seen at higher level and the opposite side. So the ghost images in the panoramic image with reference to particular anatomic structure, they are typically present on the opposite side and at a higher level due to the upward inclination of the X-ray beam. So the answer would be B. Uh, the next question, the reverse town projection, it is required for viewing. Well, the, uh, well, the reverse town projection, it is a radiographic technique that is used in dental and maxillofacial imaging to visualize the posterior aspect of the condylar heads. And the neck. Condylar head. And neck of the TMJ. So it is used to identify the high fracture of the condylar head neck, condylar hypo or the hyperplasia or the intracapsular fracture of the TMJ. So the answer would be A. Uh, on OPG, a large radiopaque mass, it is overlying the crown of mandibular right uh, second molar. which has been displaced to the inferior border of mandible that would suggest a compound odontom. Odontoms, they are more frequent. Uh, so odontom, they are the most common type of odontogenic tumors and they are composed of dental tissue. Compound odontom, it consists of small tooth-like structure in the mass and it can cause displacement of the adjacent tooth. So answer is compound odontom. The SI unit for mirroring radioactivity is, uh, well, the SI unit is the Becquerel. So remember that the SI unit is Becquerel, common unit is Curie. And one Curie, remember the value. Uh, and for absorbed dose, the SI unit is gray and the common, do uh, common unit is the red. The collimation of X-ray beam will reduce the formation of scattered radiation by reducing the size of the X-ray beam. So the, uh, collimation it is a technique that is used in radiography uh, that is used to limit the X-ray beam to specific well-defined area. So that will reduce the unnecessary radiations exposure to the adjacent tissues. Also it will improve the image quality. So collimators, they are the devices that are used to restrict the size and shape of the X-ray beam. So let us uh, say a dentist, he wants to take a periapical X-ray of the single tooth like the mole. In this case, the dentist would use a collimator to adjust the X-ray machine setting. So this collimator would allow them to narrow, uh, narrow the X-ray beam to only cover the specific portion that is the specific tooth in the question. So that is achieved by adjusting the collimator setting. So the main function of collimator is to shape the X-ray beam to match the dimension of the tooth and surrounding structure. And it also ensures that the stay, uh, 
uh, the stray radiations they are minimized so that is why your answer is reducing the size of x-ray beam so reducing the size of x-ray beam and also improving the image quality a child of seven years with no carious lesion in the mouth but undergo radiation therapy for salivary gland tumor in last month bite wing should be taken every so in this case of child who has undergo radiation therapy for salivary gland tumor bite wing radiograph it should be taken every six month so frequent monitoring with the radiograph it is necessary to detect any potential radi uh, radiation and used changes in the oral tissue including the potential dental anomalies or the complication so that is why the answer is six month it is a direct pick from mcdonald so that would be your answer which of following is most radio resistance so the answer is the answer is skin so these are the red, uh, relative radio sensitivity of various organs the skin it is relative radio resistance to other compared to other tissues it can tolerate high level of radiation exposure without significant damage so the highest level are with the lymphoid organs bone marrow intestines mucous membrane and whereas the lowest are with the, the optic lens and the muscles the wavelength of x-ray photon it will depend upon the wavelength of the x-ray photon it will depend upon the on the kilo voltage so when the kilo voltage it is increased it results in the production of x-ray with the shorter wavelength and when kvp is decreased it uh, it results in production of x-ray with the longer wavelength that is the fundamental uh, principle in the radiology uh, the recommended the recommended time period the time gap between the radiation surgery to avoid radio necrosis it's 4 to 6 months it is recommended to wait for this period to reduce the risk of radio necrosis and allow for the proper healing and recovery after the radiation therapy the risk of uh, risk of the osteo radio necrosis uh, is highest during 4 to 12 months after the radiotherapy a 40 year old female of african descent has a asymptomatic uh, 1.5 cm periapical radiolucent area in the molar with no loss of vitality or loss of lamina dura so that could be due to the focal cementosus dysplasia so it is a benign fibrosis lesion that affects the individual of the african descent on radiograph it may appear appear radio opaque or radio lucent images with poorly defined radiological borders uh coming to the next question which of following distance marked is correct for safe position during the exposure of radiograph it's 6 feet so this distance should be 6 feet and this angulation should be 90 to 135 degree that is important for your exam point of view so according to the position and distance rule in radiograph if no barrier is available the operator he should stand at least 6 feet away from the patient while making the exposure that will minimize the radiation exposure to operator uh, and still allow for the necessary radiographic images to be obtained the orbital floor it is best visualized in it is seen in the coronal coronal ct so here you can see the orbital uh, floor fracture so coronal scans they are taken from front to back perspective in the context of orbital imaging the coronal ct they can provide view of orbital floor and its structures the axial scans they are taken from top to bottom perspective uh, the sagittal ct scans they are taken from the side to side perspective uh, moving to the next question a periapical radiograph of mandibular premolar it repeats a sharp right angle bend of the periapical of the apical one third of the root so that would indicate easy question that is dilaceration so sharp bend of the curve in the root or the crown of form tooth it's the dilaceration 
Thermoluminescence dosimetry it works on the principle of uh, the answer is A. Uh, the release of energy in the form of uh, the answer is uh, the thermoluminescence dosimetry works on the principle of uh, the absorption of energy crystal when exposed to radiation. So the so uh, it works on the principle of the release of energy in the form of visible light from the crystals when they are exposed to radiation. When certain crystals they are exposed to ionizing radiation, they will absorb some of energy from the radiation. So this energy they get trapped within the crystal. So when the crystal is uh, heated, at uh, this energy it's relieved in form of visible light and the intensity of this light it is proportional to the amount of radiation to which the crystal was exposed so this is the thermoluminescent dosimetry the formation of collimator fun the function of collimator uh, the function of collimator, the answer is to decrease the exposure. So collimator, they are used to limit the size and shape of X-ray beam to area that reduces the unnecessary radiation to the surrounding tissue and provide a better clarity. A patient with the routine OPG presented as a radiolucency below the mandibular canal and surrounded by well cortical border above the inferior border of mandible just angled just anterior to angle of mandible your diagnosis would be stephanic cyst well the stephanic cyst it is also known as it is also known as static bone cyst or or the lingual mandibular bone cyst So it is developmental defect that occurs due to the inclusion of glandular tissue or adjacent to lingual surface of the mandible. So it is asymptomatic and it is seen on the radiographic exam examination. So your answer would be A. The minimum depth of lesion to be visible on radiograph it is 500 micrometer. So although radiograph may show caries that is not visible clinically, the minimum depth of detectable lesion on radiograph, it should be uh, D. Moving to the next question, the silography cannot be used in which of condition? The answer would be, the answer would be acute viral parotitis. So in case of acute viral parotitis, that is the inflammation of the parotid gland. Silography, we know it's a diagnostic imaging that is used to examine the salivary ducts and glands by injecting a radio opaque contrast medium into the ducts. So in case of acute viral parotitis, we know it is caused uh, by the contagious virus. So if you perform a silography uh, during an active infection, it can lead to potential spread of virus to the healthcare providers or other patient. The parotid glands, they are already swollen during the acute, paritis, acute viral parotitis. If you inject contrast into already inflamed and swollen glands, that can be very painful and may not yield clear results due to the existing swelling. So uh, during acute viral infection, the clinical diagnosis of mumps or viral parotitis, it is straightforward and does not require silography. The diagnosis, it is based upon the clinical symptoms, medical history and serological test. So that is why uh, we don't perform silography in case of viral parotitis. The cotton wool appearance on the skull, it is typical of osteitis deformance. So the, you can see this cotton wool appearance. It is seen in the package disease uh, due to the disorganized bone remodeling that lead to thickening and softening of bone that leads to cotton 
वूल अपियरेंस अपियरेंस द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द इनहेरिट करेक्टिस्टिक ऑफ रेडियोग्राफ आर वेल द इनहेरिट एंड करेक्टिस्टिक ऑफ रेडियोग्राफ रेफर टू द फंडामेंटल क्वालिटीज दैट डिफाइन द क्वालिटी एंड डायग्नोस्टिक वैल्यू ऑफ इमेज सो दैट दैट इंक्लूड्स द डेफिनेशन कंट्रास्ट एंड द डेंसिटी सो डेफिनेशन इट इज डेफिनेशन इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज शार्पनेस और रेजोल्यूशन so that le- uh, leads to clarity and distinctness of an object so highly defined object uh, will allow to visualize the fine structures and borders so well defined tooth structures within with clear outlines they are essential for accurate diagnosis of the dental conditions second is the contrast contrast it is variation in the den- uh, in the density between the different areas of radiograph so that refers to the difference in shade of gray from black to white so uh, so that is again essential and fundamental requirement of the radiograph the third is the density so that refers to the overall blackness or darkness of radiograph so if density it is too low the image may lack detail and appear too light making it challenge to identify the dental condition so the inherent characters they are definition contrast and the density that's your answer of choice the next question the most penetrating power is in the most penetrating power is in alpha in, in gamma rays so you can see this uh, the gamma rays they can penetrate paper aluminum and the lead whereas beta particles they would penetrate only paper and aluminum and the alpha particles they penetrate the uh, paper so most penetrating out of 3 is the gamma rays a child patient is very uneasy and not able to hold the x-ray film then in case who can hold the film in patient mouth in case where the child it is very uneasy and not able to hold an x-ray film it is appropriate for the parents to hold the film in the patient's mouth provided they are given adequate protection with the leaded apron so this should be done as a last resort when correct film placement and retention they are not possible and it is generally discouraged for the office staff to hold the film in place to minimize their radiation exposure uh, the use of intensifying screen is to decrease the patient radiation so the use of intensifying screen in radiograph it's primarily to decrease the patient radiation intensifying screens they are the devices that would convert the x rays into the visible light and this visible light in turn can expose the screen film so by using intensifying screen the less x-ray radiation is need, uh, needed uh, to create the image hence reducing the uh, radiation exposure to the patient which radiograph it is least helpful in detecting incipient caries it's the panoramic radiograph so they are less effective in detecting small caries lesion or the fine structures of marginal periodontium or the periapical disease compared to other like iopa occlusal and the bite wing that are more suitable for the caries detection the radio pay caries on the x ray films they are seen as as the answer is b so when x rays they interact with the silver bromide crystals on the film they reduce uh, these crystals making them insoluble so during the development and fixing procedure in the dark room the unexposed uh, silver bromide crystals they are removed leaving behind the reduced silver crystals so these uh, reduced silver uh, crystals they appear as a radio opaque area on the x-ray film the occult disease it refers that so the occult disease refer to disease that presents no clinical sign or symptom it can be detected to through uh, 
can be detected through various diagnostic methods such as radiography even though it does not manifest noticeable clinical signs or symptom following organ is least radio sensitive to effect of radiations the answer would be muscle we have already discussed that chart please go through that chart is important for the entrance examination the panorama or opg he, uh, was developed by it was developed by hudson campula and dixon the cross occlusal radiograph they are used in well the cross radio occlusal radiograph they are used in uh, cellulithiasis so suppose there is a presence of slivery gland stones or calcula in the ducts so the cross occlusal radiograph they are used to visualize and diagnose the slivery gland stones in the duct a thin radio line opaque line running around the curvature of root in iopa it is the thin radio opaque line running across the curvature of root in iopa it's the lamina dura lamina dura it's it's a dense compact layer of bone that lines the tooth socket so it is an important diagnostic feature in assessing the health of sporting bone and presence of any pathology around the tooth so which radiographic technique requires three dimensional view of the alveolar bone defect it's the spiral uh, ct so that allows for the assessment of the alveolar bony defects and other anatomical structures in three dimensions eliminating the superimposition of overlying structures all of following would decrease film sharpness except the smaller grains in the film leads to increase increase film sharpness option a b c they can decrease the film sharpness the faster film has a large grain size leading to reduced sharpness single and double emulsions can contribute to increase film thickness all of following are considered as a safety measures regarding radiation exposure except the answer is uh, the safety measure regarding the radiation exposure is use of low kvp is recommended so you uh, high kvp which produces image of low contrast also reduce the effective dose delivered per intraoral examination the blisters they are seen on film if so blisters blisters they can be caused due to the excess acidity of the fixer so cause is excess acidity of fixer or film is not agitated when film when immersed in fixer or due to the unbalanced processing temperature so remember this for your entrance exam and the correction technique how to correct them if the teeth they are in radiation field and the dose is greater than 5000 rads uh, periodont uh, periodontically involved teeth and teeth with periapical radiolucency should be extracted at least 2 weeks before the radiation therapy begins so it is recommended to extract the periodontal involved teeth Uh, at least 2 weeks before the radiation therapy begins that is done to minimize the risk of complication and prepare the patient for the potential side effect of radiation therapy including the xerostomia and its associated dental care requirements which of following it is not a disadvantage of bisecting technique the answer is b which of following is a major disadvantage of paralleling technique the answer is c increasing the kvp cause the resultant x-ray to have 
a longer scale of contrast so increasing the kilo voltage that caused the resultant x-ray to have a longer scale of contrast well when the kvp is increased it results in production of x-ray with high energy and great penetration so that causes that leads to longer scale of contrast that means there is a wider range of shades of gray on radiograph that can capture a broad spectrum of tissue density the kvp controls the speed of it controls the speed of electrons the speed with which electrons travel from the filament of cathode to target of anode depends upon the potential difference between the two electrodes that is kilo voltage so the higher the kvp the faster the electrons will move resulting in production of x rays with the higher energy and greater penetration the x ray fixture contains all of following except accelerator so the fixing agent that is ammonium ammonium thiosulfate or sodium thiosulfate preservative is uh, sodium sulfite hardening agent potassium alum acidifier sulfuric acid so accelerator it's not found within the x ray it has a clearing agent antioxidant uh, acidifier stereoscopy refers to the other answer is c so the stereoscopy it provides the use of x ray film to provide a three dimensional picture it involves creating a three dimensional effect in a image by presenting two images uh, separately to left and right eyes of the viewer which of following investigation is of choice with the patient with the head injury so the answer is non contrast ct so this imaging modality it is used commonly in acute in the acute setting to assess the head injuries that will provide a detailed assessment of the brain structures in most emergency departments and it can quickly identify the intracranial hemorrhage fractures traumatic brain injuries among the following which of following is the best uh, radiograph to examine the maxillary sinus it's the water view the structure uh, so best is the to see the maxillary sinuses so you can see these are the maxillary sinuses uh this one is the coronoid process of the mandible this one is the frontal sinus clearly seen this one is the zygomatic arch that can be seen in the maxillary sinuses the best view for examining maxillary sinuses is the occipital mental view it is also known as wattles view sub mento vertex view it is ideal for diagnosing fracture of the zygomatic arch so so this view will provide a clear visualization of the zygomatic arch it is also known as a zug handle view in in lateral cephalometric the distance at which pilum is placed from mid sagittal plane it's the 18 cm true about focal spot is uh the heat generated per unit target length it is inversely proportional to the focal spot so this region refers to the effective focal spot and this one is the actual focal spot
more information of focal sport we have discussed in the subject wise lecture part cells that are most susceptible to radiation damage are those that are primitive in their differentiation the sa unit for the absorbed dose it's the uh, gray to about scintillator counter scintillator counter it works on the principle that the number of impulses generated it is directly proportional to amount of x ray uh, radiation that are incident on the scintillation material